Hello, everyone, and welcome to join us. We are talking about Gong Engage today and the evolution of this amazing suite that has come out uh, just recently. I'm joined today, I'm going to kill it, but Udi Ledegor, who's the chief evangelist. Yes, I nailed, nailed it. it. Right. Nailed <laughs> it. <laughs> chief evangelist of Gong, uh, formerly the, the CMO for uh, the rocket ship. Uh, um, you know, evolution of Gong. And um, Nicholas, we call him NK3, the uh, most esteemed sales analyst, uh, sales technology analyst, among other things. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So Udi, I want to start with, uh, you know, as we look at the, the, what Dan Gottlieb at Gartner calls the sales um, what, now I can't remember what he calls it. The uh, execution hub. The sales execution hub. And so it, it's envisioned as a one-stop shop for digital sellers that has basically everything that they need uh, except for the CRM. You still have to have a CRM. I don't know why they can't put a CRM in there, but <laughs> it has Watch everything space, you need. David. Watch this space. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to steal your thunder. So... But but first and foremost, Udi, how what initial problem was Gong started in order to solve, and then how did it evolve to this point where now it's, you know, a one stop shop for digital sellers? So you know, Gong's founding story started in what our CEO Amit Bendov often refers to as a quarter from hell, <laughs> and the story he tells was he was the CEO of another company in the analytics space in BI, and things were going well until suddenly they were not. And everyone was doing the same things that they were always doing, but the numbers were just tanking. Deals were not closing. He had conversations with his sales leaders. They couldn't explain what was different now than it was a quarter ago, but the numbers were telling a very different story. So he understood what's happening, but not why it's happening. Luckily, they had already recorded some of the sales conversations, so he thought he could get some insights by listening to some of those conversations, but he quickly found out what anyone who's listening has found out if they've tried listening to a sales conversation. It's probably as, as exciting as pulling teeth to listen to a one-hour sales conversation. You've got to actually listen for one hour, or at least you needed to before Gong came about. And there's no way you can listen to thousands of sales conversations and look for patterns and understand how your team is delivering the pitch and how the customers are responding and which competitors are coming up and what trends are happening in the marketing space. And so at that point, Amit thought there's got to be a better way. And that's when he stepped aside from his previous role and decided to co-found and lead Gong under the premise that there's so much gold captured in customer interactions that was never previously systematically captured, analyzed using AI and machine learning way before it was cool and everyone was doing it, and then using that AI and machine learning analysis to surface insights, guidance to sales reps, how to best use their time of the day and automate everything that we don't need a human being to do. So that is where our founding story came from. And we've been building this for over seven years now. And originally we started uh, helping salespeople capture these conversations and surface the patterns for what the best sales reps were doing that's different from what other reps are doing. And we quickly found out that people were using Gong for a lot more than we intended it and were asking us to do even more. And then they said, well, if it's capturing all my conversations, I don't need to put in notes in the CRM anymore. We said, you're right. And then, well, if it's got all this information and also all the commercial information coming from the CRM, can we use this to manage our pipeline and deals? And we said, of course. So we allow them to use that. And then last year they said, well, now all that's missing is I want to be able to forecast my quarter using Gong because I already see all the deal warnings and what's going to close and what I need to do to make it close. So we released Gong forecast. And then finally they said, well, now the biggest missing piece is we can use Gong from when the opportunity is created all the way to the deal closed and renewals. But what if you helped us with the prospecting? Because now we have to go to another system to do that. So we said, fine. And so last week we released Gong Engage, which is our prospecting tool, which is what we call our last movers advantage in the space because there are legacy companies that 
created the sales engagement category 10 years ago with what was then the state of the art. And they introduced a lot of efficiencies because they allowed you to take a single email and send it with minimal customization to 5,000 prospects. So that introduced a lot of efficiencies at the time, but they've also changed the industry because in these 10 years, getting an email that just says, dear Nicholas, no longer works because we know that's an automated email. And if everything else is copy paste, Nicholas is probably not going to respond to that email. And so it was time to disrupt that legacy category. And that's what we're doing with Gong Engage. And happy to share more today about how we're disrupting the sales engagement space. So we have uh, so much to unpack. <laughs> so may maybe start, let's start with uh, the, the, the conversation intelligence, the initial, the founding value proposition. You, you, you mentioned something is that you started it with one use case and you found out that there were there were multiple use cases. So I think it it although a lot of people know it, it might be good to go through the different use cases in terms of intelligence, in terms of coaching. Um, can you elaborate on that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so so here's the thing. First, to reiterate the point, most organizations don't capture most of their customer interactions. When when I survey sales leaders, in a room, in a typical conversation, I say, who here captures 100% of your customer interactions? Usually not a single hand goes up. And then I lower the bar, say, how about 75% of your customer interactions? And you see a handful. And then I ask 50% and I get a couple more. But then I break the, the hard reality to them, which is unless you're using something like Gong, you're probably capturing less than 1% of your customer interactions. And here's the, the real math that goes behind this. In a typical one hour sales conversation, in average talking speed, not like mine, which is about double the average talking speed, but in an average conversation, in one hour, the seller and the buyer will have exchanged 6,000 words. That's the average human talking speed. Do you know what's the average length of the CRM notes that the rep puts into the CRM when they're done? 25 to 30 words. That means that 99% of the customers customer interaction is gone before you even try to figure out what happened in that call and what is the implication of that. So how are you as a manager going to figure out what your customer needs, what they like or dislike about your selling experience? I've yet to meet the seller that put CRM notes that says, I just wasn't in the zone today and I failed to show the value of our product. Said no AE ever, right? So even those 25 to 30 words, which they're doing you a favor and disgruntingly putting into the CRM, they're partial, they're biased, and they're probably very, very late. So capturing 100% of the customer interactions unfiltered with everything the seller said and everything the buyer said, that is a hugely important part of starting to understand what's happening. Now, once we have all this gold in the system, this is where the magic really kicks in. So one of the popular use cases that we see is a reps can stop note taking because everything is now in the system. They can actually focus on the conversation they're having, knowing that this system is capturing everything for them. And more recently, it's also summarizing it for them. So Gong now sends you an automated summary of here are the four bullet points that you discussed in the last hour. And here are the action items that you promised to take. Oh, you promised to send a case study by Tuesday. You promised to send a proposal by Wednesday. It's all here ready for you, and you can check them off your list when you're ready. So no need to take notes and remember things like that. That's very, very basic. The more fancy stuff becomes when we see, because Gong not only takes the customer interaction, but also looks at the commercial side happening in the CRM, we know that Jane is selling at a 30% higher win rate than John. Now, up until Gong, nobody understood what Jane is doing differently than John. Even Jane struggled to explain what she's doing differently. She's just doing her thing. Once we use Gong to analyze it, we can find out what are the specific patterns that Jane is using to win more deals than John so that the, their manager can now take these patterns and replicate them to John and to the rest of the team. So they might find that Jane is asking better questions. Maybe it's nuanced. Maybe Jane is bringing up pricing only in the last 10 minutes of the call while John is jumping the gun and talking about pricing before he's established value. We've seen these examples happen. We have one customer in Canada that found that half their sales team was talking about the software that they sell while the other half was talking about the hardware that they sell before they talked about software. And they didn't have a strong reason to tell them to do it one way or another until Gong told them the folks talking about software first 
they're selling at a 30% higher win rate than the ones starting with hardware. So at that point, it was clear to them there's a winning pattern and they could replicate that across the team. So those are some of the very, very basic use cases. I'll give one more, which I'm personally excited about. As David mentioned, uh, I led Gong's marketing team for the past seven years. One of the exciting ways that we use Gong is to monitor the rollout of strategic initiatives in the go-to-market team. So for example, if we roll out new platform messaging, I want to know in real time, is Justin using that? Is Sarah using that? Is David using that? And I don't want to wait six months to see if they're closing more deals or not, and then have to play Sherlock Holmes to see if new messaging helped them or got in the way of doing that. I want to see on day one of rolling out the messaging and I want to see that Sarah is actually using it on 80% of her calls, and Justin is using it only on 25% of his calls. So I can go and tap Justin on the shoulder and say, hey, Sarah is doing what we asked. Why are you not? And maybe I'll learn something about something in the new messaging that isn't working. But the most exciting part is seeing after they're using it, what is the effect of the new messaging on their win rates? And I can see that Sarah's opportunities are actually advancing at a higher velocity than Justin's and she's closing deals at a 15% higher win rate. These are real numbers from real experiments. And then I can go over to Justin and say, hey, Justin, you and your team must be crazy not to be using the new messaging. Look at these numbers from Sarah's team. She's using the new messaging, she's moving opportunities faster, and she's closing deals faster. So that is what great marketing teams like Gong's and others are doing using revenue intelligence to actually measure the adoption and the efficacy of strategic initiatives. Okay. And so there's there's two two things that I think about with the the sales reps and the sales managers. With the sales reps in a digital environment, especially if they're uh newer to sales, it's knowing what to do that day. Where should I spend my time and where should I really focus, you know, the the precious time that I have while I'm working. And then on the sales manager side, it's getting all the data and understanding where should they spend their time as far as coaching and training the team based on the data that's coming out of Gong. And it seems like you're thinking on both sides, both the, you know, the, the, that individual salesperson and the, how the sales manager can analyze that and, and help to improve their performance. Right. So, David, you're touching on, on a really important topic. We, we recently ran a study in March. So three months ago, we ran a study uh, on hundreds of sellers, and we asked them, what is their biggest challenge in their day-to-day -day working with their tech stack? And the number one problem that they mentioned most commonly, it was mentioned by 30% of the sellers we engage. They said, we use too many systems. And we can't prioritize what we need to do and how to run our day most effectively. The average seller uses 10 different systems. 10 different systems. That means average. That means some teams use 15, some teams use eight, but they're using about 10 different systems. And they said, we, we're spending our day copying information from one system to another. It doesn't help us prioritize our day. And only 16% of sellers and only 12% of sales leaders that we surveyed said they were happy with their current sales engagement systems. This was before Gong came out with Gong Engage, right? So these are the legacy sales engagement systems in the market. Only 12% of sales leaders are happy with what they're getting. And so what we found they were clearly looking for is this hub where they have a smart to-do list that guides them on the things that they are uniquely qualified to do as human sellers. They cannot be automated, but they want clear guidance on what is the most urgent thing I need to do when I sit down at my desk in the morning, and what do I absolutely have to complete before I log off at the end of the day? And they want everything else to be automated. So those are kind of the guidelines that we took when we built Gong Engage. And we built this hub with a very smart to-do list that surfaces things as they happen. If you send an email out three months ago and Nicholas was out of office and we got that automated out of office and we know he's back today, so that'll be at the top of your to-do list today because we know Nicholas is back, you need to reach out to him. If we know that your deal with Sarah is set to close this week, but she's been dark for the last two weeks, that's gonna be at the top of your list. You need to reach out to Sarah or else pull her out of the forecast because that's not gonna close. And so we have all these real-time alerts that are coming out out of real deal warnings that AI has analyzed and based on patterns of your 
own winning deals. We know what needs to happen for these deals to close, and we will surface them to you before they go south. So that's part of it. And the other part, it, so that gives you priority and structure to your day. And by consolidating your prospecting tools, your contacting tools, your deal management tools, your forecasting tools, your coaching tools, all of this into one gong platform, we're reducing the cost of your tech stack, which the CFOs and ops really care about and are optimizing for right now. We're providing a better seller experience because we're solving the biggest problem sellers told us about, which is jumping between 10 different systems. And most importantly, we're providing a better buyer experience because now there's full continuity and context in every message that you send out there. Because we all understand the value of hyper-personalization, right? Uh, the beer Nicholas emails aren't working anymore unless you actually talk about specific problems that I know Nicholas is having. But how can reps hyper-personalize at scale when they only have 40 or 50 hours a week? And happy to go down that rabbit hole if you want to. Now, I'd like you to double click on two topics. Uh, the first one is the personalization, mm -hmm. which I'm hearing is a big difference in your approach <laughs> because it's fed uh, by the conversation intelligence, I assume also the revenue intelligence and the global view on the, on, on the deal. So um, I'd like you to expand on how you can change the personalization game and as well, what I think I understand is that your approach to the engagement is less starting from a predefined sequence, but having the intelligence that dynamically will prioritize what should go next. Um, can you expand on those two topics? I would love to, Nicholas. I'm so glad you asked. So <laughs> here's, here's the thing. Be before I, I talk about how we solve this, I do want to stress on the problem a little bit more. So in that survey that we did with hundreds of sellers, hundreds of sellers this past March, we found that the average seller spends six hours a week customizing and personalizing emails and an additional six hours a week taking the company templates that were provided to him and personalizing them with additional information. So in total, the average seller is spending 12 hours a week, that's that's almost two working days, personalizing emails. Now, the worst part is when we surveyed hundreds of buyers on their experience of getting these emails, you know what they said? They said, we only open on average one out of 20 emails that we receive. And 90% of the time, those emails look like they haven't been personalized at all. Uh, that's a hair pulling moment for any seller. What do you mean it's not been personalized at all? I'm spending 12 hours a week personalizing my emails and you're saying it doesn't feel like it's been personalized at all. So this is a real, real problem. And the problem is everyone understands the value of hyper personalization, but nobody up till now has figured out how to do this at scale because SDRs, BDRs and AEs are being pushed to schedule more and more meeting, create more and more pipeline. And so they have to revert to quantity over quality, at least they had to, with legacy systems that send out basically the same email with minimal personalization to 5,000 of their prospects, but the buyers are not responding to those emails anymore. So what do the sellers do? They send 5,000 more of the same email in hopes that the numbers game will allow them to win. But this is clearly not working. So this is where we, we really felt that we can make a difference. And we want to allow sellers to do hyper-personalization at scale. And we provide several ways of doing that. So one thing that you guessed correctly, Nicholas, is that we're not going to see sellers rely on templates till the end of time. But I'm going to get back to templates in a minute because I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon. So one thing uh, that we did using our latecomer advantage to this category is we've been working on our own language models that have been trained specifically on the over 1 billion sales conversations that we have captured from Gong customers. That means that this is three times better than any generic generative AI model that you will find out there like ChatGPT, which we all know and love playing with. The problem with that, that was trained on Shakespeare plays and Super Bowl commercials. It was not trained on sales conversations. It does not know your product. It does not know your prospects. It cannot actually sell your product. But if you build a language model like Gong did for the last two years, on over 1 billion sales conversation and on over 10 billion emails that salespeople exchange with their buyers, we do understand sales conversations. We know how the best salespeople in the world are selling. And so that specific language model is gonna allow us to use generative AI 
to do hyper-personalization at scale. And since it's built on top of Gong's revenue intelligence platform, it has all the previous context of all the sales conversation that you might've had with that account. So that's one area where we're here helping doing hyper-personalization at scale. The second way we're doing this is many times you do have to start a cold outreach and there is no previous conversation for context. And so we don't think templates are going anywhere. But the problem is that most sellers, they don't wake up in the morning feeling like Hemingway, that they can write sheer poetry in a, in a prospecting email, and they could use some help. Am I right? <laughs> and so that's where we partnered with celebrity influencers in the sales field, folks like David Delaney that we have here with us, and folks like Lars Nielsen from Snowflake, and Scott Lease, and Lori Page from The Bridge Group, and Lauren Bailey from Factor 8. And we took the best influencers, and we asked each of them to contribute two or three of their top performing templates that we could include and make available to all Gong Engage users so that they wake up in the morning and they don't have to feel like Shakespeare. They can open up David's template for a cold outreach or David or Lars's template for sending a case study or, or JC Pollard's template for a meeting reminder that increases show rates. And with a few clicks, personalize that at scale and send that out to increase their conversion rates, increase their meeting books, and eventually create more pipeline. So those are some of the main ways that we're allowing sellers to do hyper-personalization at scale. Awesome. I, I think we need to uh, to cover in, uh, a little bit the revenue intelligence part of the, of the suite. So that would be uh, Gong Act 2, if I may. <laughs> I'll let you comment on that. So. Um, this is a completely different approach to forecasting, uh, not just forecasting, but also looking at the at the pipeline, at the deals. Um, can you go through the process that started with conversation intelligence to uh, um, move to revenue intelligence and what it entails the Gong way? Yes, of course. So conversation intelligence was the first category that we played in and is still a core part of the technology that runs our platform. The problem is that many, many, I would say most of the tools out there, they got stuck in the realm of conversation intelligence, which for the unindated is the practice of capturing the customer interactions, doing some basic analysis, and then listening back to the calls and perhaps doing some coaching, either peer coaching or manager coaching or self-coaching on those calls. So that is still a core technology that we use in the platform, but revenue intelligence as a platform has evolved far beyond that. So we can use a combination of the over 150 systems that are integrated into Gong together with the AI that we apply to the calls that we record and the emails that we ingest to find really nuanced things that you could easily miss with the human eye. I'll give you an example. Uh, we all know the importance of multi-threading deals, especially in the enterprise. There's anything from 11 to 24 people, depending on which survey you believe, involved in a buying committee for the enterprise. Now, do you know as a manager on every one of the deals for every one of your reps who is multi-threading their deals or who is not at power or who has a deal committed to this quarter, but they haven't even contacted procurement once? There's no way you could be on top of that without a tool like Gong. And so Gong knows. Gong knows because we monitor every single contact and every single interaction. We look at the patterns of your team's winning deals and we know that if, for example, you're selling to enterprise, so procurement is always involved or legal is always involved. And we're two weeks before the end of the quarter and neither legal nor procurement have been involved in this deal. We will put a red flag next to that deal and said, this is at real risk of not closing. So you better get on top of this. Now, once you do that, first we surface it to the rep, right? We're not trying to get anyone into trouble. We're trying to help close the deal. So we surface this to the rep early enough so that she can actually take action and get in touch with procurement and keep that deal and commit. But we also surface that to the manager if we're getting close to the end of the quarter and the manager is relying on that revenue coming in, but that deal is in all likelihood not going to close, the manager needs to know about it so that he can include it in his roll-up and his manager can include that in her roll-up, et cetera. So that's how the, the product Gong Forecast was born. We said, instead of taking all these subjective opinions of asking reps, what do you think is going to close? What do you think is not going to close? Instead, taking the actual deal boards where we have all the unfiltered conversations, 
We have the layer of AI analysis. We know all the deal warnings and the likelihood that something is going to close or not based on actual past wins and losses, and then show that to the reps and then show that to their managers to either agree with the AI recommendations or change them if there's a valid reason, which many times there is. But that way you get a much more accurate forecast. And we've heard from the hundreds of companies using Gong Forecast that they're now spending about two thirds less of the time that they used to spend on asking team members to roll up their forecasts and they're getting much higher accuracy forecast. So that, that's the power of AI when you apply it, understanding the dynamics of the deals into getting a much more accurate, a much more timely forecast. So amazing. Uh, so much of this used to be intuition and or sort of like the art of sales and sales management. And now because of the digital exhaust, basically, that's coming out of all your activities, it can be so much smarter. It's it's uh, just an order of magnitude smarter than just maybe 10 years ago. Yeah, And the, the art is not going away, but it should be yeah. confined to where it's needed and where you can use science to unlock that art, then we come in and do that with technology. So it's a really, it's a combination of both the science and art of selling. The best salespeople are gonna have jobs for many years to come, but we're allowing them to focus more of their time on selling activities. Uh, there's both an IDC survey and a Salesforce report suggesting that sellers are spending anything from 70 to 77% of their time on non-selling activities, which they hate and they don't do well and they try to procrastinate on. So if you could automate all that stuff, leave them more time to be productive doing the art of sales stuff and guide them on, on prioritizing that stuff for the best results, then you have happy salespeople and you have more deals closing. I love it. And so I'll throw you a little curveball. What about data? As you're getting into the prospecting world, you know, the SDR world lives and breathes on data. You've got to, you got to have good, clean data. It's like oxygen, right? And so how are you thinking about the data to fuel that that top end of the funnel? Right. So, the, so there's several types of data here. I, I think one of the big ones that you're referring to is the contact and account information. So, mm -hmm. so let me touch on that from, from two different angles. One, um, another one of the big improvements that we made over the legacy systems that we found in the field is that we heard from sellers who are saying the systems out there are mostly built based on leads. So we are reaching out to leads, but they are not efficiently organized around accounts. And once you have multi-threading teams reaching out to large buying committees on the buyer side, you quickly start running into each other and, and, and running over each other because now we have a couple of BDRs maybe reaching out to the same account, causing a total mess there. So we built Gong from the ground up to be an account-based prospecting and selling system, which is full cycle from lead to close. So that's already solving a huge problem that teams have found with systems that were not organically based around accounts, but around leads. The second thing that we found is that folks were wondering who do they need to contact within that buying committee and where do they get the most accurate information? Now, some teams are confined to using one system that their ops bought for them, and it may or may not have the right information of the right contacts and will not always recommend the best people to contact. So what we did, we took a different approach. We partnered with several of the top contact and account database providers and using Gong Engage, you see what looks like a marketplace saying, hey, for this account at Acme Inc., we think you should be talking to Tom, Dick, and Harry. We found the best contact details for Tom in Apollo, the best contact details for Dick in Lead IQ, and maybe Harry, we actually found in Cognizant. Click here to import them into your system now and add them to your sequence. And you can do that on a usage basis, buying just the contacts that you need, not paying an expensive license for contacts you're never going to use. And we actually look for the best contact information and recommend it for you from all the multiple systems that have integrated with Gong. So we think it's a much smarter approach. It's a cost-effective approach, and it helps the seller get the accurate contact information that they need when they need it. So... Um... Moving forward, so what do I do Monday morning? <laughs> this what do you do Monday this morning? has gotten to uh, to a point where it's uh, it's a bit overwhelming. But and and as you know, 
many uh, have already stacks. So do you have uh, recommended numbers of steps to get the most of the suite and, and deploy it? Yeah, so what we typically see uh, with our 4,000 or so uh, customers that are already using revenue intelligence, so hundreds of them have already adopted uh, Gong Forecast, which we released last year. And we have a waiting list of hundreds because last week we released Gong Engage. And just from the announcement, we got over 1,000 demo requests from existing and new customers asking to get on board with us. And we're not even in GA. That's only coming in a few weeks. So next month, the product will be GA. So it's great news for everyone. Um, but now we're seeing many new customers wanting to consolidate all these separate systems that they have. They might have one system, a legacy sales engagement system. They might have uh, an old forecasting tool, and they might have another conversation intelligence tool. They want to consolidate all, all of them, or as we call it, Gong Solidate, and use Gong as their one platform for all of these things. And so th there's definitely uh, a lot of value in doing that all together. And we're helping those customers offboard the older systems in a way that all is also cost effective, which everyone is trying to do right now. So uh, my, my shameless recommendation to everyone is if you're not already on it, go to gong.io and, and ask for your demo tomorrow. Why not? I like that gong, gong solid. I can't say it. Gong solidation. Gong solidation. Gong solidation. <laughs> You're a true, true marketer. <laughs> I 100% agree. And that was, that was the last question that I had was if you've got, you know, two or three of these plugged in and it makes perfect sense to consolidate. Now we have our next steps. So get get over to Gong and and get on the get on the list, right? Absolutely. So, um, is there, from a differentiation standpoint, anything we haven't touched? Um, no, I, th I think to, to to bring it back to to the basics, the the three main points that make Gong Engage so different from the legacy systems out there. Number one, unlike the systems that were built around leads, Gong is an account based sales engagement for prospect and selling. Number two, sellers no longer need to figure out what to prioritize on, what to focus on, because Gong provides automation for anything that can be automated and guidance for anything that the human being needs to do using a customer-centric AI purpose-built for sales. And the third and final thing is that it is now one sales engagement solution for the entire team from prospecting to lead close to customer success, doing renewals and expansion. They're all on the same system now, seeing the same customer information. So the whole team is aligned and you're providing a better buyer experience, which will bring your customers back for more. So those are the three main things that make us very, very different from anything else out there. Amazing. Well put. That's the webinar right there. <laughs> there you go. If you want to just skip to that part, folks, you got it. Uh, that was that was amazing, and I really is. I I see the the this um, gong solidation to the seller action hub. It's happening in real time, and the way that your uh, company is taking it from the that the your legacy angle is is really amazing. And I love how naturally gong solidation rolled off your tongue, David. See, it's pretty easy. <laughs> I'm getting better. Okay, and let me try this. Udi, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on and, and helping us to understand, uh, you know, what you've been working on so hard. Um, it's been a terrific presentation, and, and we really appreciate you walking us through uh, how, how it works. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure.